Hey everyone, good to see you tonight. I figured I'd try out a Friday night, see what kind of crowd we can get in here. Uh, so as you can see, that is the finished bathroom, a standard bathroom with a tub shower or a tub shower combo with, uh, you know, obviously a vanity and a toilet. Pretty basic stuff, but I really am excited to share with you what I've been working on this, uh, this week, basically creating this checklist that complements my course. I think this will help you stay really nice and organized while you're planning your bathroom remodel. You know, rather than having to try to think of everything you need, it's nice to have a checklist. So just like a pilot has his own checklist for his, <laughs> for making sure that he's operating the, pl the plane correctly, that's what this is all about. I'm all about checklists. I'm a private pilot as well. So, you know, I definitely follow my checklist. You don't leave anything for chance or error. And uh, so I was really excited to put this together. And uh, so, but first off, I just wanted to thank all the new subscribers of this channel. It's absolutely tremendous to see the amount of uptick this channel has had. All the contractors are leaving great comments, giving their suggestions on how they do things. Maybe they're pointing out some things that I need to improve, which is good. Hey, I need, you know, criticism. You can take that in and make yourself better. So I'm striving to be better every day and uh, put myself out here on these platforms like this definitely uh, does that for me, but that you know a lot of the comments a lot of the things that are going on in this channel I'm really excited and and overall very happy to see so thanks so much Also on the way in here if you can give me a like that definitely helps out the algorithm Pushes my videos out there, which you know you guys have been doing a tremendous job to begin with But be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't uh, You know if you go to my youtube channel, I have all these playlists I'm gonna get a little bit more organized on it. Let me just shrink myself down here um, I will get a little bit more organized with my playlist, but since this is still part of this bathroom remodeling course, uh, you could still just go to playlists and then go down to, where do I have that? Under playlists. So if you look at that um, bathroom remodeling online course, you could click on there and then you could see all of the courses that are on there. So you can actually take this checklist and use it. Uh, I'm hoping you will use it. I, I really want some feedback on it. And what really I was thinking about today, it'd be great if other people had some suggestions on this and can help me make this even a better list. Uh, like I said, in some ways, creating this course is somewhat selfish because it helps keep me organized, helps me get faster. And really the speed of doing a lot of this stuff just comes from having all your ducks in a row, having all the materials before you get started, not having to run out to Home Depot three, four times a day. Uh, if that happens, you can draw a project out, you know, into eternity. So, uh, you know, having your major main things together uh, really, um, you know, it really helps out a lot. And, uh, you know, I, every time I do look at a job, it's like mauling through my mind for the month or however long until I get there. And, uh, you know, I'm planning ahead. It's just kind of like, I, you know, each day I'm putting things together. Now, obviously I'm a contractor. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Steve. I'm a contractor here in the Pittsburgh area. I've been there for 22 years, but the last 14 years I've been doing nothing but uh, bathrooms. So you're you're taking advice from somebody who's done, uh, has actually walked the walk, put his 10,000 hours in, and I'm trying to uh, trying to hone this out. I'm trying to make this a better thing. And the more contribution that I get from you, feedback, other professionals who are on here saying, "Hey, Steve." You know, you could probably get a little bit quicker doing this or this would be a good idea to put on there and make it better for everybody because the, the checklist that I created, I'm giving out for free. I don't want any money for it. It's just basically, I mean, some of the stuff will help me out in there if you purchase through those links. Um, but ultimately, I just would love to make this the best remodeling list that I can. Now, obviously, everyone has a different home, has a different plumbing setup, has a different set of scenarios. So it'll be tough to make it work for everybody, but at least the procedure of how to go about this is about the same. And then if you, you know, implement or, you know, if you give me some feedback on some additional things that you thought that I should have had in there as far as parts, things that you, you know, you had to run out and get, I will put that in here so that the next person is prepared for their project. So Josh, good to see you. Michael, thanks for stopping in here. So I'm going to go through this checklist and it's basically the 99 steps that I created for my course. So uh, if you don't know, uh, this course is available now 
Right now, I have about 87 members in there. I'm trying to get to 100, and then I'm going to increase the price because I am finished with it. It does have everything's comprehensive in here. And if you haven't seen these live streams before, it's basically it's it's a, all the way from demo to installing the tub to installing a tub and shower faucet. And these are things that um you know I. I recommend as a contractor to my clients these items that I've been installing here. Now, obviously, um, there's so many different choices out there, but a lot of times, if you stick to the the main brands in a lot of ways, they're kind of all similar in, in in procedure as far as installing. But I I chose a Delta shower faucet. I think I really love them. I've always used I've always used them on all my own flip properties or rental properties or whatever it was. Uh, they were always easy to install and pretty damn dependable and anytime that i had an issue delta always took care of me but um these days who knows anymore but anyways get into the waterproofing waterproofing a tub surround is absolutely important and this is one area that if you get to the bathroom at this point if you're afraid of doing your own bathroom because you're afraid you're not going to get it complete i completely understand the fear of, of getting into that and especially if you have a family that's depending on that bathroom but the course that I'm outlaying here is if you could get to the waterproofing portion of it, which I think you can do in three to four days at the most, or even at the very least you have, if you plan for seven days, I really think that if you follow my guidance here, you at least have a functional bathroom by the end of the, at the end of the week, you might not have all the tile up. You might not have, um, you know, your vanity in, or, you know, uh, you definitely be able to get your toilet back in and you should definitely be able to, uh, get the waterproofing around that tub surround and then you can just put in your your shower head put in your cartridge for your valve and you know you can actually use everything because really at the end of the day the towel work is just a decorative part of the project so everything needs to be waterproof beneath it and uh you know you can you can honestly use that indefinitely with that waterproof system so go into detail on the waterproofing and all this stuff is really uh, economically in mind. None of it is like over exuberant, expensive stuff. You can get, obviously, when you look into bathroom remodeling stuff, you could spend $3,000 on a vanity very easily. Um, but the, the things that I chose in here are just really kind of middle of the road, not too cheap, but not too overly expensive. So for instance, the waterproofing, I went with Go Board. I think that's one of the most affordable type of waterproofing that you can put around a tub surround because it's only like 25 bucks a sheet you only need six of them you got some sealant you know you could pretty much waterproof your tub surround for under 300 bucks and that's pretty reasonable if you do this yourself you're basically you know a good tub surround that would be fiberglass i mean you could be spending a thousand dollars on that so you can really have the materials honed down to where it's just as much as what uh you know a fiberglass unit might actually call it at least a good one anyways um I go into finishing drywall. So in all these things, I work by myself. So all of this stuff I'm doing by myself. So the techniques and the stuff that I give you in here is basically something that you can accomplish yourself. Now with a hump of hand help, you get you bet. It would definitely help uh, getting that tub upstairs, getting that vanity up there, doing some of the heavy lifting, maybe doing the helping you with the drywall ceiling. But in the course, I basically show you how I do it. Uh, by myself and so you know you should be able to accomplish that as well towel setting i asked the other day on my youtube channel what their biggest hesitation was for uh, doing a bathroom remodel was it the plumbing was it the electrical towel setting drywall painting what were they not at least looking forward to and toweling was way up there i'm really surprised so i can understand the pain point there because if you know if you use some crappy thin sets before or you just didn't mix things right. Uh, that could be very frustrating. So I have a lot of guidance in this towel setting section that should make this a fun part of the project. And that's really what it should be. Um, but you have to just take away some of the, the problems. If you're, if you're buying cheap thin set, if you're buying, uh, if you're not paying attention to your layout, uh, that can make things really frustrating and really difficult to finish. So if you're doing this for your first time, I would definitely recommend going with a more common, um, you know, pattern doing something, you know, 12 by 24s, six by sixes are bigger, you know, even subway towel can be a little bit intricate. Um, and not that it's very difficult, but you just have a lot more grout joints in it. So you have a lot more tooling to do. You have a lot more things, uh, that you have to kind of pay attention to make it look professional. So, um, I do recommend if you, if you're, if this is your first time really 
trying to do all that tiling work to, to go with uh, a, a pretty easy, make it easy on yourself with the tile layout. You have enough, a uh, lot of stuff to overcome on the rest. And really, this bathroom is just a standard bathroom. So I kind of felt that this would be where you started. Start with your main bathroom, the one that uh, just has a tub. And then you can move on with your better skills after doing this and move into your master bathroom and really put the time and effort in the intricacy that you would uh, really want to do. So I just thought a, a basic bathroom would be the, a great way to start out and uh, get people into this. Uh, so if you haven't seen already, it's basically outlined day by day. We're going to go through my checklist, which is going to be exactly the same as far as... Um, you know, the procedure from day to day, but it's just going to, it's going to make it easier because you're going to be able to have it on your phone and you can check mark things that you went through and then come back over to this course. If you buy the course, you don't have to buy the course, but you'll see that it, it, it'll, it kind of complements each other really well. So when you're on the, the job site um, or, you know, just the night before kind of browse through it and make it easy on yourself uh, so that you can, uh, get a lot accomplished because that's really what it's about. You have to stay focused. You have to uh, really push forward to get this in a timely manner. And seven days, um, it, it is aggressive. I'm not going to lie. It's definitely an aggressive schedule. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, you know, at least you would have a, a, a guidance to go off of to get started. And uh, again, I'm looking for feedback from all of you as far as uh, how this experience has been for you. If there was anything I can improve, anything that I could have further explained, something I could have prevented you from having to do things a harder way. Because that's really what my channel is about, is just kind of collaborating together with people. It's not me top down. You know, I know some people have a problem with, you know, I shouldn't say that. I mean, the word teacher, bathroom remodeling teacher, as if I'm on peer and everyone, you know, that's not exactly the way it is. First off, I chose the name because I already was part of a site that had the similar name, but also that... Uh, you know, it's word, it's keyword uh, accessible. It's really going to help get my channel out there. Anyways, uh, really, this is about a collaborate effort. So I'm always looking for input. Okay, so let's get into this uh, checklist. So this is made on Checkly. So I have the link in the live chat here below. I also have the link in the description. So you can go down below and it doesn't cost anything. You can just use it on any one of your devices you don't have to download an app you don't you're not paying anything for anything you just have to click on the uh, link it'll basically bring it up as a window in your uh, phone tablet whatever you're using uh, but the thing that you'll need to do is press run process so this is going to allow you to checklist this on your own because i obviously didn't want to send something out that everybody adds things on to and then you know, then it's just a big jumbled mess. This is, has to be shareable. So that's kind of, it's a little, it's a little odd at first. You have to kind of uh, pay attention to what's going on and why it's working this way. But when you first open it up, you just want to press run process. Okay. And then this code right here. Okay. So when you press run process, it's saying it's live, it's moving forward. So you just have to copy this and save this because this is going to be your dedicated link to your checklist uh, otherwise you're going to start all over again and you're going to be checklisting it out so if you want to use this on a daily basis and make sure that you're going through these steps you know copy that that deal put it on something you know put it in your put it in a uh, in a notepad or however you keep your links so command v so there's my code right there now all i have to do is click on this and it goes back to my Deal. Now, if you're on the phone, um, you're, oh, that's not the phone one. So if you're on the phone, you're going to have to, basically what's happening is when you press that button, like, run process, it's basically just creating your own little URL. So you have to copy, go up to your dot, dot, dot mechanism here, copy the, the URL that was just created for you and then save it. So you can either get it from the dot, 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 or you can go down to your main window, copy that and then add that somewhere. You know, like if you have an iPhone, usually the notes is the easiest thing to add that on there and you can always go back and keep listing. So hopefully that's not too confusing. That was one thing that was a little um, confusing at the beginning, but hey, you could always just go back in there, run the process. If you already know what you went through, you could also print this out too. So you can go in here, 
print it out and then you can just hand check it and you don't have to, to, to go on the phone. But the phone is nice because you're able to go to the links and different things to represent things. So let's start going through it. And again, if you guys have any questions or if you're, you know, if you want to discuss your bathroom a little bit, we can about your own problems and we can try to uh, do a little bit of that in this, this chat form as well, because really all these live streams I'm trying to do is just kind of, um, you know, bringing you onto my platform, getting you to know me a little bit uh, and me be able to see exactly what I can do to make this platform better for, for everybody. Uh, it, you know, the feedback has always been something that really helps, not just the analytics of how many views I got or how many subscribers I got. It's more about how many people did I actually help uh, because that's what makes a good platform. That's what makes everything move forward. I've done it before. I've seen it on other channels. If you just, you know, push yourself and uh, put yourself out there, usually good things happen. But anyways, so demo. So day one, this is going to go through 99 steps of everything that you would be going day by day. We're not going to go through it in depth because that would take a quite a long time to go through everything. Actually, I think the video presentation that I normally do on it is a little bit more helpful because you can actually visually see it. So I won't go through everything in total detail, but just for instance, starting out right at the demo um, preparation. So when you click on these little symbols here, uh, these little plus symbols, it'll open up another thing and it'll basically give you a bunch of write-up that I have put together to help you get the products that will be helpful. So obviously demo, it's not too confusing. You're gonna want drop claws, you're gonna want some RAM board, you're gonna want some carpet guard, um, but I also have on here, if you don't know where your local transfer station is, you can just click on that and it'll bring up, you know, if you have waste management near you and it'll, it'll bring up all the areas that you have it. Now that's really helpful to get rid of the bathroom products that you're, uh, you're basically getting rid of, uh, you know, it's, it's rather than getting a dumpster or anything like that. But really what's cool is that in each one of these, this is going to help you keep organized. If you bought the course, this is kind of like a you know, in some way, a, an easier way to go back to my course uh, and, and and look at the video. So for instance, here at the end of every one of my list, I have a video to review, which will bring you over to uh, my course. So if like, for instance, this is going to go back to the goals of the day that we had on the beginning of day one. So I'll have that in basically every uh, one of these checklists of a video that will either be that or to a YouTube video that helps further explain things. So, so getting back to this, you can just check this off. So if we already went through that check, good, we're done. We got our preparation for a demo. We have all the stuff that we need. So the first thing you want to do is turn off the water check. Pretty easy. Second thing is removing the toilet. So underneath here, I have a link to get some liquid lock. So if you needed uh, that solidifier, I really highly recommend this for contractors because it makes the homeowner, I mean, that, well, that's a ridiculous price, honestly, $9 for that is ridiculous first off. So the links that I have are Amazon, just take that with a grain of salt. I'm just referencing the product. You can go to Home Depot or whatever and buy this stuff. I, the stuff is still a little bit expensive. It's about three bucks a packet. $9 is absolutely ridiculous. But anyways, it's, I always, I think it's worth it because it solidifies the water prevents you from spilling it in the home by accident. You don't have to pick it up and dump it into the tub. You can just carry it out all at once. It just takes a couple minutes for it to solidify. Um, and that's about it. So I have all those in there. If you want a temporary plug uh, for your toilet, I have that in there. This is just, you know, kind of helpful links to things. So, all right. So we removed the toilet. Oh, and the other thing, I have a couple of tools in here that you might want. So you might need a grinder. Uh, to cut off the bolts, you know, I, I, and really I'm going to end up putting together a checklist that gives all the tools that I feel, uh, you really need for a bathroom remodel. And a grinder is definitely one of them with cutoff wheels with your diamond blades. I mean, you need a grinder of some sort. So here, this is the one that I use. It's the, uh, Milwaukee cordless. Um, you know, now if you get it with a, a huge package of everything, most likely if you're doing a bathroom remodel, you're going to need that full kit, the grinder, the sawzall, the impact driver, you know, your drill, you need all of those core things to be able to do this job efficiently. So I would recommend not just getting it separately packaged this way, but getting that full kit with everything in it. And maybe I'll add a, create a, a checklist that will go over that as well. And then again, at the bottom, I have go to the video tutorial, and then you can just go straight to my 
uh, course. And then that's where I have a, you know, a more in depth write up of the project. So, and I don't know why this, when this clicks back to, okay, there you go. So, and when you're on a phone, it's just going to open up a new window to go to that. So if we finish the toilet, we go into the vanity top and basically I'm just highlighting some important details. Actually, I want to go over day one pretty importantly because this is where you can really kind of get distracted so that because day two is really important. Day two, you need to get that tub in and you want to get that tub and shower faucet in. At the very least, get the tub in uh, and, and have the drain connected. And then after that, work on your tub uh, shower faucet. But if you didn't get to that, that's not the end of the world. Um, the faucet is actually, you know, it's not, it's a very easy thing to install, especially if you buy the right equipment for it, which we'll get into a little bit later because I have some links that will help you out there as well. But, you know, one thing you really need to have on hand uh, if you have any copper, you have to evaluate what your supplies are. But these shark bite caps, if you want to get water back on in the home in a relatively short period of time, you need to have something like this. This is so much easier than trying to sweat on any type of cap. And, uh, you know, it's just worth the 25 bucks to get four of these so that you can, you know, uh, basically uh, cap off your sink and your tub and shower faucet. A lot of times you can end up leaving the, the, the supply on your toilet if you wanted to because, uh, I mean, I would always recommend any home that you're remodeling uh, or any bathroom that you're completely remodeling, you need to change out all the valves because most likely they don't even turn off at this point because of the corrosion. Um, but you could just leave the bath or the toilet uh, one on. So really all you really need is four of these on an, any normal given bathroom because all you're doing is capping the shower supplies and the sink supplies. So I have that in there. And then obviously at the bottom, again, a uh, click to my course. So got that all done. So click that, good to go. And uh, go into the vanity removal. Now this is just going through the step-by-step -step of how to go about this. So after you got all those that plumbing disconnected, you wanna remove the vanity, pretty simple stuff. Cap those water supplies, shower trim. Uh, you know, this is something that it's hard to say how difficult it will be able to get that off of there. Uh, you know, when you have the water shut off, sometimes just taking a sawzall with that metal blade and just cutting all the handles off is the easiest way to go. What's the point? What's the difference? You know, if you have it disconnected behind the shower, you're not going to hurt the plumbing. So, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. You can take the cutoff wheel, cut those handles off and try to remove all that stuff. So that's, again, the grinder and uh, sawzall are pretty important thing to have so click that we got the shower trim off tub removal or the uh, tub drain removal you obviously want to get rid of that before you start demoing the tubs around you want all that dirt into your uh, existing drain so I got a, a link to a pipe or a uh, drain tub drain uh, removal tool it's not very much I you know you can uh, you don't absolutely need this, but this is going to be helpful to install the new drain assembly. So this is not, you know, you have to kind of evaluate, you know, if you don't have a whole slew amount of tools, like what you're really going to buy on this project. And again, that's where I want to make a checklist for that too, because a tub drain uh, wrench, eh, it's kind of hard to say whether you really need that or not. It's 10 bucks. It's not that much money, um, but it, you know, obviously things a lot like, you know, add up and once you use it once if you're only doing one or two bathrooms you're not going to really ever use it again so um, that might be something that you don't absolutely need um, but it's there just to, to help you out with that and then you're going to cap your water supplies for your faucet uh, the tub surround removal that's obviously going to require a sawzall or should have a sawzall or an oscillating tool you know these oscillating tools are a little bit more accurate a little bit more precise they do have a hefty price tag but these are one of those tools that you'll find you'll use it for so many things once you use it uh you know cutting underneath the door jams for your tile cutting in a, an electrical box um you know basically you know some really hard to get areas for plumbing i use for cutting it it's just a more accurate uh tool than a sawzall i don't know if it's necessary a must have for a bathroom remodel but it sure does help I mean, it definitely helps. So it's, def it's definitely, you know, as a contractor, you need to have one of these things, but without a doubt, um, you know, that just being able to do all that toe kick 
cutting for underneath the, the jams and everything. It's it, it, There's really no other really nice way to do it other than getting a more expensive device to do it. Remove that tub surround, remove the tub, um, disconnect your light fixture. So here's another thing. You want to make sure when you get in here, do I have a temporary light plug? Do I have this to be able to put my temporary light in? You don't want to be running out to Home Depot in an hour's worth of the time after you just got started. So have this stuff on hand. This is only three bucks, not that much money. So make sure you get that. Do you have an electrical tester? You're going to want this. You need to figure out what your hot lead is. You need to make sure whatever you're touching isn't going to shock you. So they, this is a must have, I think, for a bathroom model. You need to have an electrical tester. So I would definitely spend the 23 bucks for that. You could probably go a little bit cheaper. You don't need the GFI protected or the um, reset receptacle tester. You don't really need that. You could probably find something even cheaper. There's probably one underneath here for 10 bucks, probably. Maybe maybe you know maybe you won't be able to get it for 10 bucks get it for 20 bucks oh here's one for 10 bucks so whatever the links are there um you know amazon might be a good place for that that's an easy thing to do and again that do, this does help me out i'm not gonna lie if you, you click on these links this goes associated to my uh platform so i get a little bit of that just like you know i'm sure everyone knows how amazon works at this point uh, but they kick, do a little bit of a kickback to the people that are promoting or, or helping out with stuff. So um, it does help me. But again, do your own research as far as pricing goes, because Amazon is definitely not uh, a place to say that this is the best price you're going to get for all these things. It's definitely not. Um, a lot of times you'll find it being more expensive than going to the home stores a lot of times. OK, so then remove all the drywall. I always recommend removing all of your, you know, especially if you're working on a 40, 50 year old home, you need it. You, I really, you know, the seven sheets of drywall it takes to finish it. You're going to be much better off removing everything so that you can actually see what the plumbing and electrical looks like. You could do it modifications. You can add blocking for your accessories. You can make things easier for yourself as far as putting everything together. If you're leaving your existing walls, your existing plaster, you know, it, I'm not saying it can't be done. It just makes everything more difficult, especially when you're installing a tub, because when you have because most of the time the, the the bathroom is five foot, it's basically the same size as the tub. So when you're trying to dry fit it, it just has a lot more difficulty getting into place. And every time, at least in my experience, anytime I've installed a tub, it always took me two, three, four times of dry fitting it to make sure that everything aligns correctly before I go actually permanently putting it into place. So if you're fighting with existing walls and trying to work out, you're gonna, your, your back's gonna be sore. Your back's gonna be sore. So I think the seven uh, sheets of drywall is well worth it. And again, you're able to look at all your plumbing, all your electrical, and make sure that everything's in good shape. Add that temporary light fixture. Again, I got that there twice. I just, it's important to have something that you can see, see what you're doing in there. Once you take out that light fixture, you might not have anything. Remove the drywall ceiling check um you know and each like i said each one of these has some things under here that will help you so i have a video here this isn't even part of my course or i might have it in there or maybe no i don't but here's a i have this on instagram just showing how to remove the uh, uh plaster ceiling pretty simple but it gives you a reference of what you're going to be in for definitely want to be wearing gloves with that uh, plaster is no fun to remove uh, and hey, if you haven't been to my Instagram, check it out. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what I'm doing with Instagram. I'm still trying to promote it and move forward with it, but I, I don't really, I'm not sure if I see an avenue, um, you know, doing the IGTV. Thing. I have no idea. It, it depends on people tell me to, you know, keep posting on Instagram, but it, it does seem like a nice platform, a good place to communicate back and forth. So this is what you might find. <laughs> you might have blown in insulation. Absolutely nothing fun about that. So Plan to be pretty uh, pretty miserable with uh, dirt and debris on demo day. I'm sure you're probably already aware of, of that. So, yeah, it turns into a mess. Look at that. Look at that. There's there's so much stuff. You, so you need those husky bags uh, in there as well. So, you know, at, uh, I have the drywall ceiling. So I got, you know, I mean, you could get these at Home Depot, but just getting, uh, you know, these husky garbage bags, you're going to need that. You're going to need some real the real deal to get rid of a lot of that. Okay. So we remove the ceiling, remove that vent fan. Okay. New vent fan. I always like to do this on the first day getting that. Uh, this is my favorite vent fan. Probably if you've been here, you've, you've heard this many times, but the whisper line or whisper fit Panasonic 
great vent fan. I like the ones that are just vent fans. 129 bucks, but it goes it has an option between 50, 80, and 110 CFM. So you can basically be more efficient with your fan motor if you turn it down. Um, but I, you know, I always have it at 110. I like to get the moisture out of that bathroom as quickly as possible. But that's, you know, this is a reasonable price. It's probably as much as you're going to find everywhere else. Uh, but you want to order that ahead of time, you know, especially these days. You don't even know how long it's going to take to get stuff. But in here, I have a lot of helpful things here. And this just kind of correlates with my course. All this stuff is in my course. This, is, I just think, is an easier way to hurry up and view. And if you don't have it, click on it. Okay, I need some clamps. I, there was, these clamps are great for connecting my existing duct work to it. Um, I also, you know, you want to have a uh, four and a quarter hole saw if you're going to go through your house. You want this to go through uh, for a vent if you're going through your gable end. You want to make it a little bit bigger. You don't want it to be exactly four inches. You're going to have a hard time getting that dryer vent in there. So I always recommend like a, a four and a quarter, four and an eighth at the least. Um, so, but I have that all in here just so you can remember to do that. And then I have another video um, so I have the install video of my course, so you can browse through that. And like I said, the course has a lot more detailed information that I was able to house like images on there. Now the links are basically the same, you know, you might want a, a Y splitter, you know, if you have an existing roof vent, you know, I don't see any, I'm going to do a test on this. I've been getting a little bit of slack back and forth for some guys saying that uh, if you have two vent fans on a Y configure like radiation like this, you're going to get backflow to the other. I don't believe that's true. It depends on how long you're talking about your, your runs are. Um, most of the time, if you're within, you know, eight feet, six feet of this, I, you know, I, with 110 CFM, if you have two bathrooms that are 50, um, 50 square feet each, there should be no problem getting at least 100 CFM out of that bathroom. So maybe it will probably reduce it if you had both fence fans on at the same time. But it certainly isn't going to backflow because you got those flaps that prevent that from happening. Anyways, that's just an option. It's not, you know, not to, you know, I wouldn't say that's the first choice that you want to go with. Um, but I do have a lot of other items in here that will help you out. Um, and just get, like I said, gives you a little bit more visualization of of the products that i'm talking about so this would be used to go through their gable end soffit vents are very nice to use these are really uh, like one of the simplest ways to to run the vent if you had an overhang on your house you can just uh, put a soffit vent in so there we go yeah, i gotta click on it again and click back there we go back to my list here oh so yeah existing ceiling i have this as my youtube video um it's probably going to have accessibility to it. So on my YouTube channel, I have one that goes through putting it in an existing ceiling. Say if you did not want to remove your, you know, see, it's just going to give it an ad. So anyways, it, you know, if, if you had a situation where you're leaving the ceiling, that whisper line is a very easy uh, vent fan to install. So I have that link there as well. So install that vent fan, run that wire for the light. This is another, these are the, my favorite uh, lights that I like to put in above showers. They're just halo uh, lights, but these, this one has a selectable uh, option on it. So you get the 2,700K to 5,000K if you don't know what your lighting is or what you want your lighting to be. This is a good, safe option because you have the ability to change it, uh, you know, at the last moment, basically, if you decide you don't want... Uh, you know, if you don't want the, obviously, I don't think anybody likes a 5,000K. That's like really like surgical lighting. Um, but you might, you know, you might want it to be better than 2,700K, which is, is a pretty dim light bulb. 3,000K might be more of what you want. Um, so it's nice to have the selectable option. But you, if you went with the ones that are just standard, they are cheaper. Um, I think they're almost half as much. And I could probably put a link to the what you could if you picked one that was twenty seven hundred k. I think it's about ten bucks. It's not twenty three. But I like these because they're they're nice to have the option. And twenty three bucks isn't much at all, especially you know the old recess lights. You had to get the housing, and then you you ended up getting the retrofit LED. So they've come a long way uh, in making things easier. So finish seventeen, hang that ceiling. Okay, so in here I got some helpful things here. This uh, board mate. I love using these things. This helps if you're by yourself. It holds up the one side of the board, makes it easy. It's only 10 bucks. You can put it in your uh, toll belt or you can put it in, uh, 
you know, just to have it in with all your tools, it's very easy to just grab and use. It's not the strongest thing in the world. I wouldn't be hanging a 10 foot sheet of drywall. This is pretty much more like a um, eight foot sheet of drywall just to get that helping hand uh, that you might not have. So dimple bits, another important point to have, the, you know, just is just for your regular impact drill, your regular drill, this prevents you from having that screw going all through your drywall, makes things a little bit easier for yourself. And then, uh, then I have the video at the bottom there that you can go to my course and check out. So as you can see, this definitely complements the course because it's basically the same items, but then it also is linking back to the videos that I have in there. And then you want to remove the floor. So that's the end of day one. So you can easily just check that off and, and move on. Um, okay. So, and again, when you need, when you want to go back to this, if you're done with your checklist for the day, copy this, you need to put that somewhere so that you can always come back to your own, uh, basic, your, your own online checklist. Otherwise you're going to be starting the whole process over again, but really not a big deal, but you can also print this out too. You could print this out and, uh, have that all in written hand form, which is might be you know beneficial to a lot of you if you live in areas that don't have great internet service. Day two, okay, so first thing, get that, uh, figure out what you're gonna do with your plumbing. This is where you're gonna find out all the problems. This is where you're gonna find out, man, I got a lot more work to do. I gotta, I gotta replace some of this stuff that looks pretty bad. I have a drum trap that I need to replace. And really, I recommend no matter what trap you have, whether it's a newer home, whether you, this is the 1990s built or 2000 built, and you have a PVC drain, I still recommend cutting off that existing trap and adapting a new one. It's just going to make it easier to connect to the, to the drain assembly, especially, you know, what I recommend is putting the drain assembly on the tub before you set the tub, uh, especially if you're working by yourself, it makes it a lot easier to do that. Um, but I have in here some helpful links. This is a very difficult thing. And this is where some feedback from some of the others that are experienced or somebody who just went through it. Hey, I would have loved to have had this, 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 and that. That would have made my life easier. But I do try to give a little bit of a list of plumbing parts that you want to put together. Uh, so, you know, this is the trap that I would be recommending is a solvent weld trap, inch and a half. That's all you need for the tub. But, and as you can see, this isn't, uh, Supply House is a great place to order a whole bunch of plumbing parts. But obviously, if you're just doing one bathroom, you know, your, your box stores, Ace, Hardware, wherever, they'll all have this type of stuff in stock. But PVC solvent weld uh, is what you want to go with. And then if you have to determine what your plumbing is, it's kind of sometimes hard to tell what you're in for until you remove everything there. So if you have a copper uh, drain line that's inch and a half, and you're going to adapt that to that inch and a half PVC, this would be the proper uh, fitting for that. So you can just order this ahead of time, a little bit pricey, but, uh, and you can find whatever, you know, whatever you're actually connecting to, but this is basically connecting cast iron, PVC, steel to copper. So if you don't have copper, you have to find the right one. And I can, uh, you know, really, most of you are going to have it. I mean, if you have galvanized plumbing, I'm sorry, it's a, probably a good idea to replace the galvanized. You're not going to want to put, you know, $5,000 worth of materials over something that has galvanized plumbing. Most likely that is not going to be in good condition. It's probably half clogged with uh, rust as it is. So, you know, you're going to want to, I wouldn't be adapting to, um, to, to uh, galvanize unless you're absolutely forced to and it just there's just no way you can afford it type of thing so most of the time this is going to be the cup link that you're going to be wanting to to use and then uh basically here are just some basic things this is you know it's really general because it's, it's really tough to say what you need to move things around but you know like a street elbow is good to have a 45 degree street elbow even getting a street elbow that's 22 and a half degrees if you're getting a tub, if you have an existing tub that's 30 inches wide and then you're going to put in a tub that's 32 inches wide, you might need something to finagle that trap over for the difference that you're moving things over. Typically on something like that, you're literally only moving over an inch uh, or two, but you know, having a street uh, 22 and a half degree angled piece, it's not a bad fitting to have on hand. Always get the primer and glue that you have with it. And then just, you know, helpful tools here, nothing really uh, significant, but, you know, um, 
you know, basically, you know, you can still, again, go back to my course, review the video that I have about that. And then again, I have a much better detailed information within the course that will help uh, guide you through this installation. So really goes hand in hand with the course. And uh, like I said, this, this checklist is, is free, essentially. Uh, just know that a lot of the links that I have in there are going to Amazon. And, you know, obviously that uh, benefits my platform as well. So, um, so that's a big part. Uh, that's a big write up on, on day two. So if we finish that existing trap, we're good to go. Um, you want to dry fit your tub, mark the drain location, attach the firm code to your existing plumbing. So this is just step by step of how you want to go. Put some new subflooring down if you need it. Um, you know, if I give you kind of representation of some of my, some of my, um, favorite tools that I use on there. Uh, I have a pass load, uh, framing nailer again, definitely not a necessity to have that for a bathroom remodel. That's just going to make it things faster and easier for you, but definitely by no means go out and spend $200 on a framing. Now there's other, other things that are going to make it a lot, your life a lot easier for you. Um, so yeah, making sense of debt. I have it finished. It is finished. I have all seven days complete. So all seven days are here. And in this checklist was my big, extra item that I wanted to put on. Actually, I have to put the link at the beginning of this for this checklist, but uh, making sense of debt, check out my uh, the, the checkly, uh, checklist up there, um, but that'll go hand in hand with this. But yeah, it, it, the course is complete. Uh, you know, the feedback is important. So if you've got, you've got people that are in here, uh, they're stuck on something. Now, like I said, every situation is different. I can't account for everything, but if I get some common questions, Hey, like I really didn't even understand what to do with the shimming of, uh, you know, my, my framing, I can add on some things. Hopefully I can try to demonstrate some of that stuff, create another video, add it onto that library to help you. Or I could reach out to some of these other creators that have some good content. Sal de Blasi got some awesome content. You know, I, I'll just link you to to their channel of because I pay attention to this stuff all the time. I pay attention to all these guys that are creating all these things because they keep coming up with better ideas and implementing things. And uh, we we're all kind of a, a force together in a sense. Um, you know, obviously Sal is the uh, the uh, the the original. Uh, you know, really awesome talent staller. So what he says would probably be the best way to go. Um, but here, uh, under the tub installation, you know, I got some handy things in here, kind of going through some uh, regular, like one drain assembly. Now you have to, your drain assemblies have to match the tub that you're buying. So, you know, when you buy a tub, normally they might have one that rec is recommended for it. But if it's just a standard tub, like AmeriCast tub or the American Standard Studio tub, uh, you can get any type of drain assembly. But I do really like the cable driven ones because I think they're kind of foolproof when it comes to always being able to work. Uh, one of the worst ones that I see uh, that I don't like are the pop-up drains, the ones that you press with your foot. I've never seen them last. I've had them in rentals. They immediately break, um, and they're really just cheap, um, not-so-good type of deals. The other ones, the, flip le the, the traditional flip lever, it is pretty trustworthy, but it is something that also can um, cause problems, especially if you get a real cheap one that's just not really well built. Um, you know, it can be difficult sometimes. The cable driven ones, I mean, they're a little pricey. They are a little pricey, but you know, it really is already connected. It, it, it's a little bit, it can be a little bit troublesome. It has a little bit of a bigger bottom here. So you have to pay attention to where your framing is, where your joists are, uh, because this does take a little bit more depth down below the tub. So, you know, if you have an engineered joist for any reason, if that, hopefully it's not right in line with where your drain would be, that'd be kind of ridiculous, but I've seen it happen and you can't, you can't modify, um, trusses, anything that's like engineered, you really can't modify the top plate of that. So anyways, they, these are a lot of things that you got to kind of keep in mind, but these are different scenarios that I'm going into, but the cable drivens are great. So I have a recommendation on that. Getting one of these little tubing cutters, this will make sure that you cut some things really nicely and cleanly. Is it a must have? No, but what, what, if, if you, if you had only like, you know, $800 that you could spend on tools, um, you know, I'm gonna, let's put, I'm gonna have to put that together someday. Try to put the core tools together, see what things will really cost. 
Um, but this might be one of the items that you definitely want because you're going to use not only use this for the drain assembly, but you can use it for the sink trap as well. I guess ultimately you don't need it. It's probably not a must have, but it is a nice tool to have. Uh, and then you can just go to my video demonstration of that, which would be part of my course. So check that. Here's where I have some additional things that will help you. Um, so I kind of made this a little bit easier to look at. Um, this is just my favorite tubs. I'm just giving you my recommendations. And actually I had the thought today that if there's other creators out there that are watching now, if you see somebody, you know, anybody else who's in this bathroom remodeling space, I would almost love to have, uh, I have my recommendations and right below here, put another check listener. Here is, uh, you know, so on and so forth, uh, recommendations, and I'll give them a shout out, give them ability to, you know, click over to them. I don't know. It just was a kind of an idea that I had uh, because, you know, what I like isn't what everybody likes. Um, you know, it's not necessarily when it comes to tubs and stuff, but there, there are, you know, if you have, if you've been installing tubs all the time, you might have some really good recommendations and I'd love to be able to give you the shout out and put it underneath it there. But Going from the beginning to the top to the, the worst tubs, um, not worst tubs, my favorite tubs. This is probably one of my favorite ones. And this is uh, the Jacuzzi uh, Lena. I really like the drain assembly on it and it looks really slick. It is a little pricey, but it is a really solid constructed tub. Jacuzzi does make a lot of great tubs. They don't always have to be uh, air jets and all that stuff. They do make soaking tubs. This is a standard uh, distance or a standard soaking type tub. 60 by 30 a lot of you in a traditional bathroom do not have the ability to go 32 inches it's going to crowd the toilet too much so this is a great size tub that would probably replace that existing cast iron one that you had or that old steel one like the one that i've replaced and this is a deep soaker so an actual human can actually take a bath in this so i really love it i think it's a great model i've installed a few of these things and been very pleased with it my second number uh two tub would be uh, the jacuzzi signature again another jacuzzi i don't know why that image is so bad um but it is a nice tub it has these little um armrests on the side so you know for the elderly to get out of it i think is is helpful but it is a deep soaker so you're going to have that 19 inches of depth that you're walking over to take a shower so i i don't know if uh, it's great for the elderly necessarily, but you're back to a normal price on a tub, 550 bucks. That's pretty much your average cost on a decent tub. It's going to be, you know, probably almost 600 bucks, but I definitely highly recommend that, um, you know, always check the ratings. Now there's, there's only one person that bought it off of here, but, uh, and check those ratings. But these are just the ones that I've, I've really liked to, to use. This one is a kind of a newer tub. This is the currently unavailable too. dang it. Um, this is, this is a, uh, the American standard studio tub. Again, I put, I chose ones that were just 30 inches because that is going to be your most common size tub. And uh, again, a lot of you might not have the room to come out another two inches or you'd be crowding that toilet too much, but again, well-constructed tub. Now this would just take a regular traditional, uh, drain assembly. So that's where you can get that cable driven one you, if you wanted. But a lot of times I think they do have suggestions down below for the drain assembly. Uh, but yeah, you might have to go through, through that, but you know, the drain assemblies I have recommended for this standard tub would work. Um, and then, so the American studio is great. And they actually have two versions of this. They have one that has a tiling apron. So it's kind of like a, a drop-in tub that you can towel the front surface. You have to build a knee wall for it, but it's something that can give it a little bit more interest than your standard tub. Uh, so American Maricast tub, this would be more of your traditional heighted, you know, height tub. Actually, I missed up. That's the 32. I should have got the 30 inch in there. I'll have to replace that one with the 30 inch. Um, because I, like I said, I wanted to make them all 30 inches because that's going to be your most common size, but the America cast, this is going to take a, just a traditional drain assembly. I think these are really well constructed, very easy to clean, very durable. And believe me, I am not the neatest person. If you've seen some of my videos, you know that I'm not the neatest and that, uh, uh, you know, I do, I do abuse these tops. I, I actually want to come up with a better process of protecting them. I just haven't found one that seems to hold up in water very well um so but these are great tubs that's getting a little bit up in price um again i really probably wouldn't buy it from amazon that's not necessarily the best um place to get them and then you got your good old traditional cast iron tub you really can't go wrong with that it's kind of amazing that 
they're under 500 bucks. But this is a this is a backbreaker. Uh, this is going to basically uh, be your 30 inch tub. It's going to be 15 inches in height, so it's not going to not going to be like a real adult. It's not going to be able to really take a bath in here. But this is your good old dependable one. This will last forever. And, uh, you know, it has a good uh, grip system in the bottom of these. So that's probably the only cooler tub that I recommend these days. And sadly, they used to be, you know, I used to recommend coolers all the time. But it's hard to say some of them just have not been constructed well. And I keep getting feedback from people that have had issues uh, with them leaking. Not their plumbing connections, but the actual, you know, tub leaking somewhere that it definitely shouldn't be like hairline cracks in the back. I actually had one a few years ago that had a hairline crack on the back end of the tub. Absolutely sad that that even, you know, maybe it was just a fluke, but I have heard it more than once from some people. So you can click that if you chose your tub and then, uh, install your drain assembly. So, uh, we kind of went through that, but again, this kind of just gives you some, those tools and then back to the video that you can go to my course on dry fitting the tub, setting that ledger board. Uh, again, you're going to be setting your, your, your bathtub a couple of times to get it set in place. Now, I mean, obviously if you've got a cast iron one, you're going to try to limit your movement on that, but even a cast iron one, you might end up having to dry fit twice to get to know exactly how your dry drain assembly is going to hook up to everything. Uh, and then you dry fit it again after you set that ledger board. Now, not all bathtubs need ledger boards, so you have to pay attention to the manufacturer's specifications. Um, that cast iron one's going to need a ledger board, and uh, I think all of those tubs that I just recommended are going to need ledger boards. I could be wrong. I have to look back at them, but I'm almost positive all of them need ledger boards. But that's where you need to dry fit that tub. You have to dry fit it up again. You have to get that ledger board up, set the tub again, make sure everything sits right, before you actually secure it in place. Um, and, you know, the only way you're going to do that is to dry fit it. So, you know, again, getting your uh, bathroom completely gutted is going to make a big difference. Um, set that P-trap arm. This is uh, basically before you put down uh, that tub into place. And then set and secure the tub. Again, I just have some recommendations in here. Uh, here's the review of the video that I have in the course. You can always go there. And then I have one here. This is to a, uh, well, it is opposing. It's opposing myself, I guess you could say. But I actually put this in here because I think it's important to go over. So this was in my, my old site, um, but I, I demonstrate, this is in my own home, of, uh, of installing a Delta acrylic bathtub. But this is with the mortar installation. So this is still, you know, all the stuff I put on this site has been really useful. Just I just put in here, tell Jeff to pay me. Uh, <laughs> when he sees that. So anyways, that is, uh, you know, I want to put as many links in here as possible to help you on different situations, because I know that not all of you are going to just choose the tub that I installed. Um, so attach the drain trap and drain assembly, click. All right. We're good there. Um, again, this is your, uh, I would get both of these. Okay. So the, the adapters for your plumbing trap. So here's a spigoted one. This one slides can slide into the um, uh, the P trap, and then this is the the female adapter. So you can put a riser pipe to extend above that P trap. So going back to um, uh, do I have it under here P trap? I could probably you know I should probably put that in there as too. So these are suggestions I'm suggesting myself on this one, um, but I should probably put this in there as well so you can refer to. This is your P-trap. So the one adapter will slide right into this. And then the other one, you can put a, a little fitting here to raise that riser pipe to connect to your drain assembly. So um, that's basically, you know, I, you can, I could clear that up better with actually looking at the, the video of it. So the tub installation video. Oh, so, all right. So this is what you're going to see if you did not buy the course. I don't know why I got logged out of my own course, but... Uh, if you did not um, buy the course, it's going to have you want you to enroll, pay to get in, and then you can access all those links. So I guess I'm glad, glad that happened. I just don't know why uh, I got logged out of my course. Um, anyways, might have to look at that here in a minute. Um, so anyways, that that is helpful because you want to get both of those adapters. You can always return it. It's only a couple of dollars. You're better off to have it than not have it and have to run out and get it. Adapting to your PEX uh, supplies here. So I have, 
Um, I just put in here, you know, it really depends on where you live and, and what your plumbing code is in your own township. But hey, if you have access to the back of your tub, I don't personally see any problem using a shark bite shutoff valve. You have access to it. If there was ever an issue with it, you can address it right there. It's not in the wall. Um, you know, I know a lot of plumbers, you know, that's the worst thing they ever heard is having a, a shark bite hidden in a wall somewhere. Um, you know, I can't agree or disagree with that necessarily. Um, but if you have access, there's no reason you couldn't just put this right on top of your copper, connect your pecs to it, and then finish your plumbing. Really, really simple, fast. I mean, it, you can't get any faster than that. It's just pushing it onto the thing. But then I have uh, the links for the other tools that you need with it. You want to deburr that copper. You want to mark the depth of it so it's installed properly. Um, you know, and then you're going to need a shark removal tool. So this is a simple thing, but in order to pull that valve off and reset it or, um, whatever it is, you're going to want to have that on hand in case you need it. And then I have all the lists of all the stuff that it's going to be helpful for you with installing, uh, that shower valve. And then you can also just go to the video that I have in the course as well that will highlight all of that as well. So you dap there installing the rough in valve again, same thing. You're going to have more uh, information here. Uh, this is one thing I wanted to go over as well. Make it easy on yourself. And again, this this checklist is free. You can just click on that link, get into this, and then you can see all these links. But this is what I would recommend. If you don't want to get into soldering, you can use shark bite fittings to go on your back access panel. If you have access, I, I would I, I'd probably go with all the plumbers that say do not bury these things. And some of them just think it's absolutely just temporary, temporary, temporary. But if you have access to it in the access panel, you know, put the shark bite um, shut off valves there. And then you can connect everything with PEX and you don't even need to bring a soldering uh, gun out at all. You don't have to solder at all because this is this, you could buy this one and it has everything already incorporated onto it so all you have to do is connect the piping to each side and then your shower port very very easy 70 bucks that's you know that's not bad that's not bad that definitely is going to save you a bit of time so um and then you can go to the video tutorial there so that's in the rough and valve so again this is just so that you can check in here check to say do i have these supplies if, if you're if you're using this checklist and you have some suggestions i do have at the bottom here suggestions i'd love to hear from you if you found something else that's going to help somebody else out i add it on here and then everybody can you know be that much better off here i have tub and shower faucet recommendations these are just the ones that i like uh, again i'd love to have another creator somebody who has their own experience that says, Hey, I think that, uh, you know, this Kohler model is the best thing that's ever invented. I'd love to give them a shout out and give them a, uh, a way to, to go over to their pages. Um, we could, you know, we could be as creative as we want with this, but, uh, if we could get an ultimate checklist together, I think it's going to benefit everybody. And, uh, it'd be love to hear the different perspective. Anyways, um, Delta shower faucets, some are my favorite ones and I have them linked. I don't really necessarily have them linked to Amazon or anything. This is from build.com. These are, this is one of my favorite sites to order shower supplies and everything uh, on. It's just, they've been, uh, they're a Ferguson company um, and they, they're just really easy to deal with. And you can just find just about every type of faucet out there on there. So I like Delta, Moen, Hans Grohe. This is like, if you want to get into a little bit of an upgrade, something that's a little bit fancier, has a you know this basically has a separate turnoff valve so it sh it would shut off the uh, the the tub spout and then go straight to the shower head without having any of those stupid ports that kind of you have to pull up on so this is definitely a better system a different better valve but uh, does not ship to Massachusetts that's kind of weird huh it's not compliant with shower head flow regulations that is interesting I've never seen that before. So they're going to start restricting uh, water flowed shower faucets to different areas. Is that what that means? That's pretty odd. Huh. Anyways, you're getting into a higher price tag. That doesn't even include the rough-in valve, I don't believe. You have to make sure when you buy this. Yep, shower valve and required. So you're going to be paying for the shower valve. So you're going to be paying some money for the Hans Grohe, but it, I, it is a really nice system. I've installed a few of them. Really, really recommend them. And in the middle of the road, um, 
it would be the Kohler. Uh, these are nice. Uh, just a, this is like a traditional um, shower fuzz. I probably installed. I don't even know. Quite a few of these. I used to I used to install them all the time. And uh, but yeah, you're getting into a, a little bit more mid range price plus the valve. So you're stocking still another 50 bucks on top of that. So you're getting into the $300 range for that. These are just recommendations that I had and I've installed many, many of them. And then you can go down to, um, example of tubs. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just have this again in the tub and shower faucet is to make it easy on yourself, basically buy, you know, the, the port, the ones that already have the PEX adapters on it. It's just going to make it quicker. Like why make another solder joint? Why add another, uh, fitting to go on there if you can buy the valve that already has it incorporated onto it. I think it's a no-brainer. So, you know, that's all going to make it easier for you. And that's something I can uh, continue to work on and make it better for all models. Um, not all models. That would be insane to try to get every faucet that everybody likes in there. But, you know, at least the hardcore ones, the ones that, you know, that I'm recommending. If I got the Moen one, I could find a roughen valve that makes it easier to do. So click that. You, you got your tub shower faucet in. And uh, you want to fill and test the tub. Again, these are just checklists to go through what you want to get done that day. Move that sink drain if you need to. Sometimes there's, uh, you know, like in this particular bathroom, the old uh, drain port or, you know, where the adapter goes in was all soldered in. And there's no getting that trap out of there. So the easiest thing is to just cut off that whole entire T and replace um, that whole area. So... This is something that you want to address. Um, I have a video in the course for that. And then GFI outlet, if you need to, you know, the, a lot of times the older homes, you're going to want to run a new dedicated circuit to that GFI. If you have an outlet that's connected to your lighting circuit that somebody added at some point, or if you get, you had one of those old light fixtures that used to have a plug on the side, can't use those anymore. Those aren't GFI protected. They're not, they're not up to the new standards. You have to run a dedicated circuit for it and you're going to be better off because if you ever want to resell your home that is definitely one of the things that a home inspector looks at and those should be a gfi protected uh outlet and uh especially if you have it connected to your light switch where i do see that happen a lot you turn off the switch it turns off the gfi they're gonna they're gonna pick that out in that home inspection i can guarantee it so you want to uh run a new wire most of the time that's kind of what's happening a lot of ways so Day three, framing, uh, blocking, shimming. Okay, so this is really getting into making life easier for yourself when you're building, uh, when you're building the bathroom. If you spend some time here, it's going to make all the rest of the process much easier. Getting those walls flat is going to make it easier to set the tile, put in the backer board up. If you if you have a big bow of any sort, it's going to just make it harder to make that tile align with one another so shimming things out putting some blocking in for your accessories you know there's nothing worse than those stupid drywall anchors for the um what do you call it the accessories your towel bars they don't last they they almost always fall out at some point somebody's too rough on it eventually so if you put some blocking behind it you can actually screw into some real wood and it'll last it'll last as long as you know anything else so um, that's a nice thing to be able to do at the framing blocking section. Um, and then, you know, again, I have that in my tutorial, I have to unlock the course. You have to get into the course to actually see it. I don't, I, I don't really feel like feeling, fooling around with it right now. I don't know why that did not go through there, but, um, we can get, we could get to that. But anyways, I'm not going to show you the videos now. We've gone over that many, many times before, but, um, yeah. So you're always going to have a link to a video tutorial on each one of these sections. Blocking for accessories, like I was just saying. If you put these behind her, it's going to make your life easier later on. You won't be so frustrated with it. And, you know, it is sad to, you know, that is the worst thing is if you're a contractor working for somebody and, you know, two months later, you know, everything's great, but my towel bar fell off the wall. And, we're, we're you know, it, and it's a very frustrating thing. You spend all that money on a bathroom and then you got something like a stupid towel bar falling off and it really makes the whole bathroom feel like it's not like put together right. And a lot of times it just has to do with, you know, the, the, the cheap um, anchors that come with some of these accessories. They're just not very well put together. And I'm sorry, the drywall ankles are just not going to be something that normally um, adds on. I always recommend getting a toggle bolt. So I have... No, I yeah I don't have it in here because we're just doing blocking up here. 
later down in the list in accessories, I have toggle bolts. If you had to, if you did not do your due diligence and put the blocking behind the accessories, you can use a single um, toggle bolt on the one you know area that you screw in, and it'll make sure you're secured in place. But the regular drywall anchors that just don't last, uh, especially when it's something like a towel bar, because that usually gets a lot of abuse. So. Make sure you put those blocking before the accessory. This is just going to help you out to remember to do that. Okay. Then hanging your drywall. Uh, so this is going to be hanging the rest of the bathroom walls. Again, having dimple bits, having these on hand to make it easier for yourself to install. Very helpful. Um, you know, you don't have to go with something like this, but these are nice. If I was a contractor, I'd definitely buy one of these. These, you know, um, they're, they're nice to be able to get that that bottom sheet of drywall tight with the, the one above. Um, but, you know, you probably have to do a bit of drywall or have to be doing this all the time to even buy that. Um, yeah, and then I just have the recommendations and then the video at the bottom for that as well. First coat of mud. Got to get that first coat of mud on. As soon as you hang that drywall, get that first coat of mud on. Time is in the essence. If you're trying to do this in seven days, you need to get your first coat of drywall mud on day three because day six is when you're painting. So you need to get, uh, you need to give everything time to dry. So you definitely need to get that first coat on there. Um, this is a great time to practice. This is a great time to get used to the mud pants if you're not used to it. Um, using a six inch knife. And then I have a video at the bottom that's really going to help you out. A lot of that's really difficult to explain in words. You pretty much have to watch somebody do it. But I do have links to some things. I thought this was a reasonable price for all of these items. DeWalt, I, I've never even heard DeWalt coming out with this stuff, but they have mud pans now uh, with uh, all of these different, you know, and you really kind of need all these. You don't really need the eight inch. Maybe you do. I don't know. I've been getting a lot of debate from like, hearing a lot of people saying, hey, on those straight seams, use a six inch, wipe it off with an eight. That's all you need. I'm usually uh, uh, putting it on with a 10, taking off with a 12 or a 14. Um, but, you know, apparently a lot of drywallers are telling me I'm, I'm putting way too much mud on the wall. I'll take that in consideration. I'll definitely uh, try to get better at it. Uh, I'm not, by no means uh, the best drywall wall out there. <clears throat> you know, that's one thing about bathrooms. There's so many different uh, different trades in this particular part of your home. You got the plumbing, you got the electrical, you got drywall, you got, you know, um, tiling, you got a lot of complicated things here. And if you're trying to do it yourself to save yourself a lot of money, you, you know, um, you know, you, you can't be, you can't have 20 years experience in everything. So, um, you know, that's where it's, it is helpful to get some feedback on things and I, I want to improve. Um, and I, I, drywall is definitely one of those areas, but, uh, I think the techniques that I have in here will get you through it and will uh, give you some good advice on how to go about uh, doing that towel layout. Uh, this is really kind of, um, more of a video demonstrated thing. It's really kind of hard to just put it in writing. And if it was, it was just going to be boring and not really make sense anyway. So, you're going to want to review the video on the tile layout, but really day three is when you're starting to really think about that because you want to frame the niche next on this. So framing the niche, um, you know, you want to make sure that it's a little bit bigger than what you actually want your final size to be. And maybe even where your tile layout is going to be. Give yourself a little extra room, make the niche an inch bigger. You can always overcome and add more thin set or build up, the bottom sill or surface or whatever it is to meet up with your tile layer. You can't stretch it. You can't stretch the niche. It's harder to do that. You have to get into all your waterproofing, move everything down if you have to do that. And at that point, you might as well start the tile layout over again because the amount of time it would take to fix that. So paying attention, planning ahead, thinking about that tile layout on day three when you're framing the niche is going to make it much, much easier. So, and I go in here, just a couple topics about the framing. Now, this is all basically on the course detailed as well. Um, this is just a reminder of how to go about it and what you're looking for. The waterproof tub surround. This will be helpful. Even if you don't buy the course, you can at least go in here, get these helpful links, you know, or out of stock until December. Well, that's already way past uh, December here. I don't know what's going on. Um, I've heard people are even running out of this on the other side of the West Coast too, which is terrible. Um, but I thought this was a great kit to buy if you don't have a local place that you know of that can, um, you can get go board 320 bucks for seven sheets. Now a tub surround, you're really not going to need seven sheets. Most likely you're just going to need six. Um, but you know, for 320 bucks, 
have it shipped to your door is not bad if you can get it. Um, but I would go with, uh, on this top surround that I did, I would go with 10 tubes of sealant, especially if you're making a custom niche, you're going to need more of that. Um, nail spotter Yusuf, What do you mean by nail spotter? You mean for, uh, going over your trim work? Um, uh, if that's the case, yes, I, I think that's a better way to go. Cause you want the non shrink putty on base trim so that you don't see those little, uh, Brad nail holes on it. Um, I have the links to the shower valve seals. So this is around your shower valve. If you have the, the valve that can even apply for that, but for a tub spout, I definitely absolutely recommend you buy one of these half inch seals. This will seal around that copper pipe and you're not relying on anything else to make sure that it's watertight. Cause most of the time tub spouts, they don't have anything that's uh, kind of being waterproof against the tile layer. A lot of, a lot of the older homes you'll see, you know, caulking all around that tub spout because water was getting behind it and then getting into the wall and then dripping down below. So this eliminates it. If there's one valve seal that you, that I would definitely recommend, I would definitely buy this half inch one for a tub spout. It makes a big difference. If you're doing it for the shower port, now this is very debatable. I almost barely ever, you know, I mean, I do it because I'm demonstrating it in the video, but get a bigger one, get a three quarter inch one um, because that's going to make it uh, nicer to get that shower arm in. It doesn't usually fit too well in the half inch one. So I make sure you specify that on what to get. Getting one of these corner trials, very helpful for spreading that sealant in the corners. So these are all small items that make things quicker and easier. And that's what this whole checklist is about is making this faster for you. And then, you know, if you missed the video on the shimming, you can go back to it in here. Um, and then I just have a whole bunch of lists. You're going to want some acetone uh, to clean off your hands. If you get, if you don't wear rubber gloves, putting with all that sealant, this is really the best way to get it off. Um, and then if you're doing, uh, which I always do between the go board and the drywall, uh, using a, um, the Schluter Curdy membrane between that. So you're going to need a trowel, an eighth inch by eighth inch trowel to spread the thin set for that, that transition. So I have that all in this, um, yeah, the Curdy band. So this would be the Curdy band. You're probably gonna, you're gonna need this anyways uh, for the floor if you're gonna go with Detra to make that floor waterproof. So buying a roll of that, um, basically the roll of this is basically just for the side of the tub surround. You probably need two of these for any given bathroom or get the 98 foot long one. But yeah, they are a little expensive, 30 bucks for a, a roll of it, basically a buck a foot. But waterproofing, absolutely big, huge deal, big, big um, item to uh, to check off and do. And, uh, yeah, so. And then I just have it here. This is the next step is actually putting those valve seals on. So, and again, I have them kind of listed with that video tutorial. So that's day three. So, so as you can see, this is good. This is very helpful. Now I got, I think I got logged out of this somehow because I don't have the ST on here. So. Um, anyways, it, as long as you're going and, and after you see this live process here, you, you copy this link, this will bring you back to your checklist that already has everything checked off. Okay. So day four, first thing is let's get that Dietra floor, um, Schluter Dietra down. If you weren't able to do that on day three, which would be nice if you could get the Dietra mat down the night before, it's kind of nicer. I'd like to have it down before I actually set the tile, but you can always just uh, set the Dietra and then immediately set the tile if you want to, too. So there's no there's no wait period that needs to be happening between setting the Dietra and setting the tile. You can do it all at once. And then again, I have recommendations. Here's just a link to the the um, the um, Schluter Dietra mat. Um, why is it saying ten to th oh this okay? So this is the this is the fifty four. I'm going to double check some of these links here because that doesn't seem right. I don't know what that, you know, I actually sent out a list the other or sent something to somebody that they made it look exactly like Schluter and it wasn't Schluter. It was some other off brand. You have to be careful on Amazon, but you, uh, you know, you can get that at Home Depot. You get your, any of your, you know, I really recommend getting it at your distributor, uh, your Schluter distributor. That'd probably be the best way to go. And actually I'll probably put, I'll put a link into that as well. You should just go find your local Schluter distributor and purchase from there. So if you're in Pittsburgh, if you're in Wexford, best towel is probably the best place to go. That's where I get all my stuff. Um, 
but yeah, I have the Toria tutorial on the Ditra. Um, and you know, this is an awesome mixer. If you're a contractor, this, this guy here, I know it's a very expensive item, but these, these mixers are awesome. So if you're doing this every day, I would definitely recommend that. Okay. So we check off the sewer Ditra. We do waterproofing up against the top. Now this is all part of the Ditra, but it just kind of goes through the video tutorial of how you seal up to the top the way Schluter wants you to. Waterproofing the floor, going all the way around the perimeter of the floor with the Dietra mat. So again, here's the video tutorial for that if you're missing that. And I have more details on my course that get into that. So let me go back into my course here. So yeah, um, Dietra. Yeah, Dietra Tile Underfoot. So you can just go into this on my course. And you'll have a video of mixing the thin set, installing the Dietra. And then, you know, if you've seen this before, you kind of already know what I have in here. But basically, a guidance, uh, basically going through the main points of going about installing Dietra. So you don't have to necessarily watch the video. You can just look at, browse through the images to double check that you have that right coverage and everything. So, um, so you would do that. Towel layout. Towel layout again. Um, this is, you know, we're day four. You're going to be starting on that tub surround. You're going to be doing that back wall. So this is going to kind of give you some basic reference points. Again, going to the course is going to have a little bit more visual help there along with the video that helps it out. But again, I have the links here to quickly go through. This is more about just having it on your phone. If you're, if you're, if you're, you know, I don't know if you're driving a bus to, or if you're on your way somewhere and you can browse through this stuff. This will, you know, keep you organized or be able to buy some of this stuff while you're thinking about it. Uh, and, and the phone is obviously in everyone's hands. So having this checklist that you can just use off your phone is, it should be pretty helpful. Um, but yeah, these spacers are awesome. Those are definitely something to buy the make setting tile a lot easier. And in all the different um, things that I use on a daily basis when I'm doing tile work. So this is my favorite to, um, towel cutter. You know, this is probably more your professional grade towel cutter. But, you know, I'll put another link into another one. I think the Ishi towel cutter, it's a little bit cheaper. Do they have Ishi? Okay, yeah, Ishi. 279 bucks. Yeah, it's kind of still kind of expensive. Um, but it's half the price of the other one. This is another great towel cutter. I'd say if you're just getting into the towel toweling world, this is a great um I mean, it's still expensive. I know it is. It's 300 bucks is still a lot of money. But this would be something to start out with. It's, it's not the $500 that the Montelit is. The other thing I kind of I remember that I, I did, oh, I, this, was my, this is what my go-to was for the longest time. But this is nice and slender. That's where the other, uh, the other one, the Montelit, I'll go back to my checklist. So my Montelit one, you know, this bar swings out, so it really takes up a lot of volume in the bathroom. But this is a much more precise towel cutter than the Ishi in my mind. But the Ishi is still a really, really great towel cutter. So I definitely recommend that as well. Um, so I haven't really tried any of these QEPs, but it's still, heck, that's the same price, really. 230 bucks. I'd still go with the Ishi over that. Um I know nothing about these cheaper ones. I really have known nothing about them. Love to get the advice on it. You know, if, uh, if you're remodeling your bathroom and you bought one of these Amazon $100 special guys, I'd love to hear how that worked out for you. I'm probably not convinced that they're that accurate, but, you know, you might not need that much accuracy either. So, hey, Alex, Architectural Sheet Metal. Good to see you, man. I figured I'd try on a Friday night to see see what kind of crowd I get here. A little bit slow, a little bit slow. I guess everyone's out uh, relaxing or not on YouTube, which is a good thing. So, But you can always watch this later. Um, but, uh, Alex, good to see you here. If you guys are doing sheet metal, definitely check out his channel. He's really good at what he does. He explains things very well. So, Again, towel layout day four, kind of going over things. Determine a trial setup. Um, this is important to be able to make sure that you have the right proper coverage. So I have a whole bunch of different trials in here that I like to use. Um, a lot of times on six by six tiles, 
you know, just a quarter by quarter is totally sufficient. Not very much money, 10 bucks. You're going to need multiple trials for a bathroom remodel. You're going to need that eighth eighth for uh, the Curdy uh, membrane. You're going to need a 3 16th inch one for Detra the set. You're going to, you know, and if you're doing mosaics or, you know, like I did a six by six is a quarter by quarter is going to be the way to go. Um, if you're going to be installing a Schluter pan or if you're going to do, you know, larger tile, you're going to want to do uh, at the minimum a quarter by three eighths. Now, this is all dependent on uh, whether you have good coverage. So you have to check that when you're installing your tile. This is one of my favorite ones, this Euro trial. I use this. Uh, primarily a lot for uh, large format tiles. So if I'm doing 12 by 24s on the wall, I'll use that. I still, you know, the floor, um, going over Dietra, honestly, I still like doing a half inch by half inch trial. Oh, that's not even the right one. See, these are things I got to change. This would probably be fine. This would work. I don't know why the heck I have that link on there. I'll have to change that. But the half inch half trial, um, that gives you the most amount of thin set underneath to there that uh, will allow you to even things out. And the reason I say that over Detra is that if you're waterproofing it, you have to see you know, the seam that you might have in the bathroom. So if you have a five foot wide bathroom, uh, you're going to have a seam somewhere. So using uh, the, the Detra or the uh, Schluter membrane over that kind of bumps it up a little bit. So you have to be careful about that when you're tiling. You don't want it to you know, start out at the low point. Anyways, just going with, I'll, I'll get into that more at another point if, if people have questions on it, but my video explains a bit of that as well. So check that. Here's a good thing. I think it's helpful. Um, these are my favorite thin sets. So Art X, X77 is my go-to, go-to. Like this is like premium. Um, if I was doing glass, if I was doing some real difficult um, mosaic, anything that's sensitive, um, anything that I need a really good non-sag quality to it, x77 is the way to go um, but if it's just a normal uh, tile 12 by 24s um, you know my go-to uh, is the x5 uh, this i think for any beginner who's getting into tiling the art x products are going to last the longest in the bucket i think that's the biggest pain point that people have with tiling they mix the thin set and if it hardens up in the bucket, they wasted their money and they're frustrated and, you know, they just couldn't get to the tiling quick enough. This stuff typically lasts at least three hours in the bucket. Depends on the humidity and the heat of your home. But um, really, really long. I have not found a thin set that lasts as long. So it's definitely worth going out of your way, going to the tile shop. Uh, that They're selling those products, so they, they should be nationwide to a certain point um, to be able to purchase that. But that's my number one. Uh, I really highly recommend it. My second would be the Schluter All Set. So this is just, uh, and you're going to, you know, I would want this to be, um, now I wouldn't go to ordering this off of Amazon. It's probably, and it's not even available, but um, it's absolutely ridiculously priced. 80 bucks, that's that's twice as much as it should be. Uh, but I'm just referring to, you know, the product. So you can take a look at it and purchase it at your, your local place. But um, this is great. I, I really highly recommend if you're going to use D Schluter Dietra, and their products to set it with the all set. They, it definitely has a better bond, I feel, than a lot of other thin sets. But if you like Laticrete, this is like a, an OG. This is like an original type of uh, thin set that everyone you know has been using. Uh, Laticrete kind of created thin set to begin with. So uh, their stuff is always uh, top notch. This will be your basic uh, modified thin set for XLT. Great long lasting stuff. Not as long lasting as the Ardex, but pretty dang good. Um, the pay thin sets, if you, you know, I know Lowe's is carrying all this stuff now, so I wanted to incorporate that. Honestly, most of these are all about the same. I mean, I don't know any difference between the porcelain tile mortar and the floor tour tile mortar. I don't think it's, well, this is probably unmodified if it's $8. That's, I probably wouldn't get the, the, the tile mortar, but I just was linking over to the Mapay products rapid setting i use this a lot um you know sometimes if i'm really in a pinch and i'm needing to get you know say if i want to put that shower floor down in the morning and start tiling the back wall at the end of the day a rapid set is nice to use um but if this is your first product you're never going to want to touch that stuff but even just a regular porcelain towel mortar it's reasonable stuff not terrible um you know but then you can go to my video and uh check that out as well so there's my favorite thin sets Boy, I, I can't even believe I'm already in an hour and a half on this. So, 
Um, always check coverage. Uh, I have a tutorial on that as well. Tiling that back wall, cutting the shelving for your niche, uh, doing your side tile wall. I have a little thing under here because a lot of times on day four, at least the pace that I keep up with, I do the back wall of the shower. I do a side wall. So the side wall, that's the easiest, not the plumbing wall where I you know, typically put the niche. Um, but I do the back wall and then you could basically after three hours or so with the Ardex, you can go ahead and start cleaning up um, the tiles. So taking out those tile spacers, getting some of these white scrubby pads, definitely have these on hand. You want to order these ahead of time. That's why I have these links in here on there. So you click on there, get it, get a five pack of these. You're definitely going to use them. There's no doubt you're definitely going to, but you can scrub down that tile three hours after you set it. That's going to make up much process much easier to rather than waiting the next morning to scrape out your, your thin set joints. If it's your own home, you can, you can, you know, you can eat dinner and then come back, clean up your towel. It's going to be so much faster and easier if you get on it uh, before all that thin set hardens um, or just really take your time at setting everything. And that would really solve all the issues. So, um, but yeah, so that's just kind of a, an extra point that I have in here. Second drive, coat of drywall mud. You get that second coat on there. Very important um, to, to stay with your time schedule. Uh, because if you want to do this in seven days, you're going to need to get a coat of drywall ever since you hung it on day three. You need to have a second coat the second or on the fourth day. Tile floor out, floor layout. If you can't set it this day, at least get a good part of it figured out. Um, I have links in here for my favorite type of system uh, for leveling system. This is the perfect level master. You can get a usually a kit will do uh, your entire bathroom of that what you would need. So if you're just doing one bathroom, I would just buy this kit. That probably would do it, um, especially if you're going with the 12 by 24s. Um, 300 spacers will do it. You only get a hundred clips in there, but you're not going to end up setting all of that tile one day anyway. So you can reuse the wedges and you just have 300 spacers. I always get the, the one thirty second ones because it just, I can allow myself to space the joint later. Um, you have to pay attention to the, 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 how your tile looks. So looking down the edge of your tile, if it's not rectified, if it's not completely square, um, know that if you use a one sixteenth inch joint spacer, it'll end up looking bigger than that. If your tile is like pitched on, uh, towards the bottom of the tile, basically that spacer is bumping it out in the top surface is what actually matters. That's what you see when you fill in with grout. So I have more detailed information that in the course, uh, in the video that describes some of that, but I do have, uh, these that you can just immediately link over and, and purchase for your project. And again, having that all on hand. Ardex sponges, now, I mean, these are pricey. If you can't get it at the tile shop, um, I still think at the very least having three or four of these for any bathroom remodel is going to make a big difference as far as helping you getting nice tooled uh, grout joints. Um, so these are just... Uh, Things that you, you know, that's definitely a must have is a, is a good sponge for uh, the grouting process. Cutting and prepping the floor. Um, again, if you don't have time to set the floor on day four, you can still do that if you had to. But sometimes that's just a little bit too much with all the other additional items you're doing here uh, with setting some of that tile around that tub surround. Um, but again, I have a, a blade that I'm really uh, happy with that helps get through a lot of, um, you know, circle cuts uh, different things is this uh, Montelit diamond blade. Not a must, definitely not a must, but it's definitely helpful. So click that. Um, setting your mosaics on Curdy Band. This is very helpful. Makes it so much easier to do this the day before um, setting them, especially on these cheaper, cheaper. Okay, there you go. Now I'm logged back in. Um, so if you're part of the course, this will just link you straight over the course. This will give you the video to look through and all the other more, uh, detailed information that I have in the course, as far as, um, you know, the, the, the Cardi band and adding these mosaics to it. And the reason I say this is definitely almost a must have to do a thing these days is because these mosaics are, are getting thinner and thinner and are being, they're getting more difficult to align with your, the tile that you're laying on the main um, wall and plus with them being so thin 
you know, you're almost guaranteed to have thin set oozing through them. So this is almost the only practical way of going about it and setting that the night before. So you can just plop it all on the wall at once the following day. So this is what I would do last thing of the day um, to set and ready to do. So, you know, and I should mention, if you ever buy the quartz, you could always leave a comment down here and I'll most likely get back to you because I want to try to build out and make sure that that is... Um, you know, really helpful for people. I'd love to see that be kind of more like a, a forum of, of a sorts. So, all right. So setting that mosaic, that's really important to do uh, the day before you're going to be setting that. Um, we're going to towel the, the plumbing wall. So we're moving on to doing that plumbing wall. Again, I have a video on that. Doing the towel niche, setting the edging on the niche. This is just kind of going through a checklist, obviously, of, of how you go about doing that. Um, but the mosaic border, this is where you already have that already set. Um, I'm just reminding you day four to have that set. So this is kind of like, you kind of want to look through this checklist, you know, the week before, or actually I would really advise you looking at this now if you're even planning to do a couple months from now so that you can make sure you're choosing the items that you need and get them in on time. Um, and everyone's having a problem getting stuff in. So, you know, but uh, yeah, so I have that in there and then the reference again, uh, to the video uh, installing the mosaic border. So this is why it's so much easier to do that because you're able to just take these and just plop it all up there so you can add the thin set up and build it out to your wall. And it makes it so much easier to get everything in line. There's nothing worse to me than looking at a towel job and seeing that, that towel work indented into the, to the towel work. It just looks terrible, sloppy, and this is one great way to do it. So, all right, we're going to have to get through this a little bit faster here. I'm already an hour in. So if you guys, if somebody's watching this all the way through, thanks so much for putting, a, for, you know, going through all of this. Okay. So cleaning the tub, that's a kind of a no brainer. Sanding the drywall. Uh, since you're, this is the second coat uh, that you're going to be sanding. This is the biggest sanding day because you're sanding all those joints. You want to put that third coat of mud on. You want to set that towel floor. So this is basically at the end of the day, cutting those door jams in here. Again, I just have this oscillating tool here. This is very, very helpful to cut those door jams. I'm not saying that you have to go buy out, buy the best one here. This is just what I would recommend, this fine. The fine is a really good quality tool. Um, and then I have the video tutorial there as well. And then this, 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 this set, setting the floor edging, so this would be just like your um, Schluter Rondek. Wouldn't buy it off of Amazon. Probably not the best place to get it. Um, definitely not the cheapest. And quite honestly, a lot of them are confusing on here. So I have the link to it just to demonstrate it. But I would definitely try to find your local dealer. Home Depot sells a lot of their, their edging too. So day six, sand that drywall right at the beginning. Touch up that drywall here. This is This is helpful. Five minute mud, you know, this day six, you're, 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 you're basically, what day were we on there? Sorry. Oh no, we are on day six. I'm sorry. Day six. We are on day six. What am I thinking? Day six touch-ups. Yeah. You want to get five minute mud, 20 minute mud. You know, you don't have to go with five minute mud. Maybe it'd be better for you to get 20 minute mud. You don't need to have everything dry in 20 in five minutes, but you want to have some hot mud to be able to touch up some of those areas so you can get the, th the place painted today. You need to paint day six. If you're trying to do this in seven days, you need to paint day six. You need to get two coats of paint on there. You don't want to be setting vanities in place, hanging mirrors, doing anything with accessories with wet paint. You're just going to frustrate yourself. You're going to obviously create more nicks and, and more painting that has to be done. And honestly, when you, when you nick something after the painted surface is done, you have to not only you know, fill it with drywall mud, but you're gonna have to prime it again, or otherwise the paint will be darker in that spot. So um, touch ups an important part first thing in the morning. And I have um, obvious video tutorial on that as well. Cleaning up the floor. So a lot of times they, you know, as a contractor, I'm working five days a week, take the weekend off, come back there Monday. Sometimes my, I'm not even putting my floor in until Friday. So I left the clips in there. I left the thin set in there. That's where having uh, a canister of this is going to help you out. Sulfamic acid crystals cleaner. This will allow you to uh, soften up that thin set and make it easier to remove. I actually am going to change that link. I'm going to put a note here, change the link on that because I, I prefer to get them a pay 
product. So I'm going to pay um, sulfamic crystals. So I'll have a link to that as well. Um, this is one of my favorite non-tiling tools. I have this in a couple of them, but it's just a carpet knife. Helps scrape out the joints, makes it easy. And then those white scrubby pads, always something that you need. Poxy grouts. Here's another thing I have here. Um, I have my other favorite grouts that I like to use. Um, my two top ones are epoxy. I still think that's the most stain resistant type that are out there. Um, but what one that's really starting to become one of my absolute favorites is a Spectralock one. Uh, this is some really great premix stuff, really easy to use, very fine consistency. Um, and then if you wanted to go with more traditional, less expensive type, you can go with, um, ultra plus fa now all of these grouts they don't require sealing they're kind of a high performance or they're a urethane base so i don't really see the point in using traditional grouts anymore get stuff that doesn't need to be sealed something that doesn't need to be um, maintained setting the grout prepping for paint uh, a lot of times i'll set the grout the epoxy if i'm doing epoxy i'll set all this stuff Okay, and I have in here, obviously, you know, the grout float that I like to use. These Trox, uh, Troxel grout floats, great for installing all, embedding all of that. Ardex sponges, again, if you're doing grouting, at least get two, two of these. At least get two of these. Definitely makes a nice tooling uh, sponge. I mean, you, you won't find a contractor that's been doing this for a while that doesn't use that. Um, they might hate the price of it, but uh, they are really good sponges. Um, cleaning and tooling the grout. But anyways, I was going to say is prepping the drywall, uh, wiping everything down, wiping all the dust down, maybe wet sanding a little bit. I go through the process of wet sanding in my course, um, but basically just using a wet sponge to do it and using the proper um, or something that's going to quickly dry so you can get into the painting. So using that quick dry caulking is very helpful. So these are all links that I have in there. That quick dry is from Sherwin Williams, so it's a, it's a Sherwin Williams uh, product um but i have that in there as well and then you get then you know during that time where i'm wiping down the walls i come back to my grout i clean and tool the grout i have a lot of great tips if you're doing epoxy you're definitely i mean you, the 25 bucks that you could pay for the course right now is going to benefit you uh greatly and even when I, the price does go up after i get 100 members in there um you know it'll probably go up to 50 75 bucks something like that um but you know the epoxy um highlights that i have in here is going to be worth its its own and, and being able to do that because that grout's expensive it's not cheap stuff so you prime prime the walls paint the ceiling usually two coats of paint for the ceiling caulk the ceiling edge joints that's with that quick dry stuff i'm going to kind of quicken it up here a little bit i'm already an hour 45 minutes 40 minutes in here um so you paint the ceiling i have my favorite paints that i recommend the master hide this is one of my favorite um why does everybody have to ask me that? Uh, but the Master Hide flat white ceiling paint, that's traditionally all you need um, for a bathroom, especially if you have a good vent fan. But I recommend using a 3 8 inch nut roller, and then I have all the other goodies in here as well. One thing that you'll, you know, I think is worth buying, uh, you just like I said, the checklist is free. You just go in there and check all these things out. But 17 bucks for this drip-free caulking gun, it, you will love it. I absolutely love it. It's the best one I've had in a long time. And uh, a good caulking gun makes a real difference when you're caulking things. Shower trim. Put on that shower trim. Basically finishing up around your tub surround. Painting the walls. You're going to need two two coats of paint. Uh, my favorite is the super paint. Uh, a lot of people have their own opinions on what the best paint is. I've always had good uh, luck with that. And I just have a whole bunch of different things there. And in my painting um, tutorial there as well. Caulking the corners of the tubs round. You can go ahead and start caulking it because that epoxy at this point has dried up quite a bit. Um, so I have some recommendations for a matching. You know, you have to pay attention to whatever grout you're getting. But lattice sill, you can order your matching 100% silicone for that. Again, I'm touting this newborn caulking gun. I think it really helps out. Getting some Windex, you're going to want to use that so that you can spray over joint and make it easier to tool. And then uh, I have referring to the video on how to do that. Now, obviously, writing is difficult to explain how to caulk. You have to kind of do it to or see it to be able to help you with that. And then you want to, I have there as an item, you want to fill that tub. Fill that tub 
before you caulk around the edge of the tub because if you, especially if you get an acrylic tub, the water will weigh it down. If you can weigh the tub down and have that gap between the tile and the tub, the wide as it's going to be, you fill that joint with the silicone and then you're going to have a longer lasting caulk joint. If you just caulk it without the water in it, that movement will probably weaken that caulking joint over time. And you'll, you know, it's still a maintenance issue that you always have to go back and caulk things. Um, you know, most caulking joints last three to four years and then you have to redo them. Um, but if you do it properly the first time, you might get a long lasting um, caulk joint that really doesn't have to be addressed for a very long time. Grouting the floor. I usually do that right at the last part of day six uh, because I don't want to have anything in my uh, grout that uh, could be problematic. Day seven, this is kind of a crapshoot. This is all over the place. You could do this kind of in any order. This is just the order that I happen to go with. Um, so I'm replacing those switches. Okay, so I have some recommendations on, on the switches. I like these toggle switch types. I think they're nicer looking. I've got linesman strippers. These kind of do both things. Allows you to twist things together and strip the wires. That's that's a kind of a go-to uh, electrical item here. Got your electrical ties. You got the ideal wire nuts. Um, these are better than just uh, you know the cheap ones that come with your light fixtures. And then I have the video tutorial on replacing the switches. So a lot of that stuff you're not going to be able to really. Um, you know, the demonstrations in the course make it a little bit better. Installing that GFI, installing the new breaker in the GFI. So in here, I have, you know, obviously everyone has a different type of electrical box. So you have to kind of match up with the one that you have. But I have just like kind of a reference point of the kind of common uh, panels that are out there. So if you had a Home Depot model, this is probably what you would have, the square D. So these are just some common... Uh, type of deals here to kind of reflect what you have. And then I have uh, basically some links to some common breakers that you might use. So if you had a GE panel, you know, you can buy a, uh, a 20 amp circuit breaker for your GFI. So electrical is a little tough to come uncover because everyone has a different situation a little bit. But um, you new, new trap adapter for the sink, installing the vanity, and here I have, uh, you know, a lot of great information. I like to get most, you know, it's a lot of my stuff from build.com. So here you can kind of browse through and uh, find a lot of the cabinets that, you know, and you'll see there's some hefty prices on some of this stuff, but it's worth, you know, a lot of them already have the sink top in there. But in my course, I really highlight a lot of information about going about choosing a vanity especially if you're going to be putting it in a corner. So I have a really great video here that should demonstrate how to go about installing it, but really just some highlighted points about having a cabinet in the corner. And the big issue is a lot of these freestanding vanities do not look good up against a corner because it provides a huge gap between, you know, the actual edge of the cabinet and the wall. So as you can see, this kind of flares out. So beware and pay attention to the type of stuff you're looking for on this. Um, it's important to kind of have a straight leg if you're going up against a wall to make fit. So in here, you know, in the course, it, go, it goes in the imagery of everything. So it makes it a little bit easier to be able to go over it. But I, th I really think the checklist itself just is another way to just quickly, you know, get your ducks in a row uh, before you get started. And again, I have those links to those videos down below here. So you can use this with the course to make it easy. New shutoff valves. I recommend getting, um, I think they're great. Some areas aren't gonna allow it though. You know, some places do not allow the shark bites to be used anywhere. But I think these are some of the easiest ones to use. The shark bite type that just slide onto your existing copper. Um, you know, really easy. Uh, I, I use them when I can. If you have stub outs, I have some in here. This would be for like a three eighths inch uh, chrome extension that might be coming out. Some of your older homes have that. And then I just have a bunch of different things here along with the video of installing it. Installing that sink faucet, installing that, um, setting that sink faucet. So these are just like a checklist of what you would do, basically setting it into silicone on top of your vanity. Install. I go into installing the, the base trim. So you wanna install that base trim right after you install that 
vanity essentially so that you can you don't have to be painting behind your toilet when you install it so this is just kind of the order of operation to get done in seven days okay so doing that base trim um this is just a suggestion definitely you know again using that quick d uh sherwin williams caulking will allow you to paint that caulking and trim very quickly and paint the wall again you, you kind of have to do it back and forth back and forth to get a nice joint but you want to paint your caulking do not just caulk your trim and not paint it it will look like crap in about a month uh dirt falls in it the painted surface over the, the caulking will make it last and look nice for a long time you can wipe it off clean it you know so on and so forth um, but using a quick dry siliconized latex will make sure that joint is working well but i was going to say is this finish nailer you know these things are great uh, I, they're so nice very expensive but uh, i just have a link in there just in case you were a contractor thinking about uh, making it easy on yourself with a cordless hey lou how you doing um okay so lou is your wife uh, valerie by chance that last name i saw her use the checklist earlier so i thought that uh, it looks like she's going to be using it. Let, please let me know your experience if you are in this course. I really, you know, I am continually wanting the feedback on things. Connecting that sink trap um, and then installing the rest of the base trim with this, like, again, just a checklist of, of the order of operations. So going back and installing your heating vent and finishing off your base trim so you can paint that caulking and paint that wall. Installing your light fixture. Okay, so this, I have some suggestions um, that are kind of typical between eight and 12 inches from the ceiling is normally where you ha hang your boxes. But I have different scenarios on, on going about installing uh, an electrical box. So this is where, again, you're, you're going to want to get into the course, click over to the video, and this is going to refer to going over some of those highlighted things with imagery of what you're doing. So if you didn't do any planning ahead, these old work boxes do work. I just don't really, I mean, that's your kind of last resort. I would, I would not want to have to do that. You're better off having some blocking behind that wall. So since you already got the whole bathroom, you can easily get this prepped uh, and make it easy on yourself for this finished project. Okay. So I don't know why it always makes me go back, click twice to do it. I'm just supposed to be my browser. Um, all right, so install that light fixture, install that mirror, install the toilet. Okay, and here I have my favorite toilet, the Cadet 3. If you've been on my channel, you know that that's basically all I ever install. Um, it really uh, makes it easy. So thanks, Josh. I'm, I'm glad. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, I think they do help. I mean, it's uh, it's something I've, I've gone through a lot of different things. Now, I you know, I don't have all the best tools. I don't have all Hilti things. But I do have um, experience with a lot of these things and, and the stuff, um, you know, like, again, I want to make a list that's going to be like, you have to have this to do a bathroom model. A lot of the suggestions I don't, that, that I am suggesting here, you don't have to have. They just make it easier. But when it comes to installing toilets or before you order the toilet, I wanted to, you know, like as part of this checklist is pay attention to your sizing that you have, that where your toilet um, flange is located. So from the center of the toilet to the wall. You know, you, you might want to get a 10 inch toilet that would fit better. 12 inches rough in is most common, but I have a little example here. So if you measured from your actual wall, not your base trim, but your actual wall, and you got 11 and a quarter inches, a 12 inch toilet, or at least a cadet threes usually fit. You can basically get away with three quarters of an inch of difference either way and be okay. Um, it's when you're getting down to 11 inches or 10 and three quarter, you're going to want to get that 10 inch rough in. Now these, these toilets cost a little bit more because they're not as, you know, that's almost $50 more than the 12 inch rough in. But these things are the things you want to pay attention to and you don't want to have problems later. You don't want to have, uh, you know, a 13 inch or I should say a 13 and a half inch center from your toilet to your wall. At that point, you're going to want to go with the 14 inch. Basically, the difference is, is the tanks. The tanks are bigger or more narrower uh, for their sizes, but it allows it to tuck against the wall tighter and look more normal. If you had, um, you know, basically 13 and a half inches and you put that 12 inch rough in in there, you're going to almost have two inches behind that toilet. It's going to look pretty goofy. So I have recommendations on that. 
Um, the if you can order these ahead of time, I I do like the foam gaskets better. I think they're better than um, you know the wax rings, and I think they'll last longer. And they certainly, if you didn't get everything done, you can just buy one of these and and put your you you know set this and then still reuse this same gasket when you finish your tiling floor. So if you didn't get everything done in that first week, you could use one of these, re-uninstall your toilet after you know you get more time to come back to it and then still be able to use this. So um, the rubber green gaskets are, um, you know, I, I don't know, I think in some ways are better than the wax rings. But I have all the other um, additional items in here to, for suggestions along with the video tutorial. Okay, then accessories, um, pretty streamlined. This all depends on what you buy. But, you know, again, if you're looking at this checklist way in advance, go back to day four. That's when you want to be putting your blocking in for your accessories. I don't want you to forget that. It's going to be easier if you have blocking so you can screw them right in. Having a good laser. You're going to almost need a laser regardless of what you do these days. It's going to help out tremendously in all of what you put in. So toweling. Um, setting these accessories, having a decent laser. It's kind of a must-have tool, tool for bathroom modeling. I, I would pretty much put that in that category. Shower rod, put that. Carpet tuck. Um, so not a whole lot here, but if you needed some tax, additional tax strips, just kind of representing what you have. And then I have the video down at the bottom uh, back to linking to the course. So that's it. 99 is just to finally enjoy it. And, uh, you know, again, if you haven't, been uh checked out my course get that checklist i have it at the bottom representing um basically uh you know a click to it you could also go to my link tree i have it here and i have a subscribe you know you can get to my youtube channel here as well but link tree is going to have all of this stuff so right here bathroom remodel in seven days checklist you can grab that if you ever want to buy me a coffee for any help that i've helped you out with you can click on here as well um, this is just kind of like a, you know, something that support the channel. And I, I'm, I'm still needing that at this point because I'm still, even though all these subscribers on here are, are gaining, it's still not uh, generating anything quite yet. And um, I have a lot more that I want to I want to do. So if you are um, able to support me by buying a course or, you know, buying me a coffee, that does really help out a lot uh, here. Again, I have the link to the course that's already on there. And then this is that buy me the coffee thing anyways. And then suggestions. This is how this contact me. If you have some suggestions, if you're not going to want to, you know, there's no reason that you have to buy the course to be with this. You could just take this list and, and use it on your own. But if you have a suggestion, you know, just click on this contact me. You can come to my main uh, contracting site and I'll get the email. That's my dog scuba. You can just, you know, put your name in here and submit a message. Um, but I'll always be on these live streams on YouTube. You can probably always find me. You know, you can leave a comment in the description below there as well. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. And actually, I just got a notification that I actually completed uh, the entire checklist. So, I do, you know, when you when you use this, just so you know, when you fill in your information there, you, it is coming um, to me. But I I'm, have no intentions of, of communicating through you. On that, I just, it's just, this is hopefully something that um, can help you out with on your own projects. So check that out. But um, Josh, have the Milwaukee Bears, have you used the 18? Yes, the mud mixer. I love the mud mixer. I, that used to be my go to. It's just, I used it so many times that it ended up um, not working so well on it. But I, you, you do want um, the five amp batteries are not enough for that. Uh, so the mud mix, uh, mixer, mixer Milwaukee. So this is what Josh is talking about, is this mud mixer right here, this, this bare tool. This thing is awesome. I love it. Um, but you really need, the 5 amp batteries just are not enough. I, I think you need the um, Milwaukee battery. So I, I would go with the, the nine, is it 9 or 12? Yeah, so there's 9, and then is there 12? Or what's the next height? I think the 9 amp battery is what I primarily use. Yeah, you do have a 12. No, there's, so it's the 9. Yeah, it's the 9. Um, oh, they do have a 12 here. That probably would even do better. But yeah, having the, the bigger battery for that mud mixer makes a world of difference. These 5 amp batteries just don't seem to do it. But um, Milwaukee uh, batteries, I, I have somewhat been happy with. Um, 
they're definitely better. Uh, I'm trying to think. The Hilti ones have just had lasted the absolute longest. Um, and I think they have the warranty. I've, I've had a couple of, that I've had to replace. Um, but yeah, Milwaukee, I don't know. I have a love-hate relationship with Milwaukee. I mean, they, they, it's better than your average stuff, but it's also not the best stuff either. So, you know. <laughs> All right. All right, Lou. I thought uh, I thought that might be just a uh, common last name. Maybe. Maybe I'm just looking at Valerie. So, anyways... Hour and 55 minutes. Wow. Okay. It's amazing how that goes through. My voice is already gone. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully you get value out of this. Check check out my checklist. Um, check out the course. You can look, you can watch the whole course at, on my YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for joining me here tonight on, on a Friday evening. And leave a comment below. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know uh, what you think of this and if I, uh, you know, if this was beneficial to you. So, all right, guys. Have a good night.